a reading from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Congregation may remain seated for the reading of the Passion until the appointed time when we stand. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, what will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver, and from that moment, he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, the one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The son of man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the son of man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas who betrayed him said, surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, you have said so. Well, they were I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new and new in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed. My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, 
yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, so could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, my father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See the hours at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer has given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kiss him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back in its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels. But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowd, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to uh, Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and elders had gathered. But Peter was following him in a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death, but they found none, although many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He is blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him. And some slapped him, saying, Prophecy to us, the Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you were talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him and said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, 
and he swore an oath, I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, what is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? for he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, which of the two of you do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, us and our children. children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole court hort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene and his son. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes amongst themselves by casting lines. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. 
Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him saying, he saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel, let him come down from the cross now and we will believe in him. He trusts in God, let God deliver him now. If he wants to, for he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of his, the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, at once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, earth shook and rocks were split. The tombs were also opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After the resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee, and they had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hung in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene, Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is... After the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was alive. After three days, I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead and the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, you have a guard of soldiers, go make it secure as you can. So then they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Be seated. When a wave crashes into a rock, it's a spectacular show. You can see it out at sea, building and building. And you know the rock is there, and as it comes across, it just 
it's like this violent, incredible upshoot of air and water and sound. For all the world, it looks to us like the rock wins. It broke the wave. It's withstood its pressure, its force. It created the violent resistance. That's what it looks like on the surface. But over time, we know a few more things about waves and rocks. The rock will be worn down by that wave. The waves are powerful things. We can see what they do when they come on shore. Waves erode and fade and wash things into one. And so really it is with the love of God at the cross. It's the oceanic love of God being sent to love us and to withstand even the sturdy steadiness of the rocks that we create in our societies and institutions and rules and hopes and dreams even. Those monoliths don't stand because all we know is that over time, with time and pressure, all of that returns. All of that will be washed into one. This is the story of Holy Week. It's God's week. It's God's week to tell God's story whole. We have to walk through the difficult part to get to the sandy beach. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Prayers of the People is Form 4, I mean 6, sorry. For all people in their daily life and work, for this community, the nation, and the world, for the just and proper use of your creation, For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Mark, Gail, and Dabney, our bishops. 
and for all bishops and other ministers. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially Martha Craddock, Obi Sue Thomas, Susan Caudill, Carlos Galliano, Dean and Eileen Groby, James Anderson, Beth Colmery, Jim Jewett, Holly Fuller, Clark Stearns, Weston Herndon, Bruce Heflin, Don White, Candice Moore, Judy Klickner, Janet Crocker, Jake Kirshner, John Sandage, Karen Mott, Doris Savage, Sa Sarah Reynolds, and Sue Robb, and Rosalie Moore. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom, especially Erwin Bomfock, Fred Kinneman, Sarah Mistina Klein, and Kitty Herman. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and up and done. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning and welcome to Emmanuel Church. Uh, John Thomas, JT, the rector, here beginning Holy Week, our kind of Super Bowl and World Series kind of wrapped up together. Um, and uh, just want to make you aware of what's going to happen uh, this week. Um, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we have our last Lenten supper. And when the sun goes down, we shift into Maundy Thursday mode, and we'll come in here after supper and have evening worship by candlelight, and then uh, we'll have a, a stripping of the altar, which is what we normally would do on in a Maundy Thursday. Good Friday, we'll gather again uh, at noon uh, for the Good Friday liturgy, three o'clock for a Stations of the Cross that starts in downtown Crozet. And uh, 6 o'clock, again, the liturgy for Good Friday here. Saturday, this is the most exciting part. 
Saturday morning at 10, if you show up here, you will be with a bunch of other cheery people helping, helping Peter Cottontail make life work. Not only will you help stuff eggs and potentially even hide them, just to be helpful to the bunny, but we'll also have a, a few other things to do physically around the place to spruce it up for Easter. Saturday, 10 a.m., there will be coffee and probably copious quantities of carbohydrates <laughs> in the form of breakfast pastry. All right, then Easter Sunday, 10 a.m., outside. The weather gets better every time I look at the forecast, which is pretty marginal because it was really bad. And it's, it's, it's getting better. We're going to go ahead and soldier on and believe we've rented chairs. That's part of what we're doing on Saturday. We've rented chairs to put out so that we can welcome others. If you want to bring your own chairs, please do so. If you want to sit in ours, have at it. The first 200 get in seats at, at, at Emmanuel. Uh, unless you bring your own chair, in which case it's 201. Did I cover everything? In advance, I want to thank profusely everyone who makes all this happen. The readers, the acolytes, the verger, the deacon, the readers who joined us today, thank you, our choir, how you sang together while we walked around in circle, I don't know. It's amazing. But those who bring, Alter Guild, everybody, ushers, everybody who brings this whole shoot and match together, this is our, our together work. But uh, it, it does not go unnoticed, and I'm very grateful. So before we even kick off, you've done a great job. Uh, Easter is a big day, and I think it's a great day to put our face forward. It's, it's a big celebration for us, and... You know, about half of everybody here is going to be somebody who doesn't come here regularly, and that's just their chance to come to church, and we see that as an opportunity not to make them believe like us, but just to welcome them in. Um, and so it's our big day. Uh, join us here and invite friends, neighbors, whoever might, should kind of be in a chair in Emmanuel's back parking lot at 10 o'clock next Sunday. Any other announcements? Are there any birthdays or anniversaries this holy week? There's one here. Wait, 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 wait. Scott's birthday. Scott's birthday today? Yes. And you chose to be among us. Aren't we fortunate? Hardy Carr. Well, that's a memorable birthday. <laughs> I know it's a long service, but let's dig into this for a minute. <laughs> did you get married on purpose on your birthday, or did it just happen? He planned it so that he would remember that it was both your anniversary <laughs> And his birthday, except just now, he forgot. Yeah. Oh, well. Hardy, you, you. happy birthday. <laughs> happy anniversary. No fooling. <laughs> oh, kill myself. All right. Oh, we got more. Oh, hey. Elvira. Good Friday. Big parade in uh, Crozet on Friday. <laughs> yes, sir. Whoa. This Tuesday is Julie and my 25th wedding anniversary. Oh. A quarter century. Dorothea? My birthday's on Saturday. Whoa. <laughs> you can kick it off with coffee and donuts right here at Emmanuel Church. <laughs> Anyone else? My gosh, it's prolific time. Oh, Kyle. Uh, it's my wife's birthday next Saturday. Heather's birthday is next Saturday. And Dorothea can get together and get a ride over, yeah. Sure. Wow, a lot going on.
going on. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on these your servants as they begin another year or another year together. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to God. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, for our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself and by his suffering and death. He became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep peace. Gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into a world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make the journey with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day, and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.